Welcome to the next lesson in the Swift UI to-do list app. Props if you've made it this far. In this video, we're going to start working on validation for logging in. So making sure the user did indeed enter an email password and then also writing the code to sign a user in once we start creating users. So before we get into things, drop a like down below and let's dig in. Okay, cool, good deal. So we created a register uh, view. We also have this login view model and we'll eventually want to create a register view model. But for now, in our login view model, um, we want to actually call this login function that does absolutely nothing yet when we tap on this gigantic login button. So let's actually do that. So let's go to our login view. And if you guys recall, we have this TL button. Now we do also hold our view model in this view. So what we can actually simply do is just say view model, go ahead and log in, right? So how do we actually log a user in? Well, the first thing we'll want to do is make sure that, hey, has the user entered an email and password or are they empty? Right? And if they're empty, we probably want to show like an error message or something instead of the app just sitting there looking like it's broken. So let's do that. So the first thing we're going to say here is guard that email isn't empty and that password isn't empty, otherwise return, meaning stop. Now, what happens if as a user I just hit the space button a few times? Well, that's no good. So let me say email trimming characters in white space isn't empty. So if I just hit a bunch of tabs and spaces, it's going to basically trim that out and make sure that it's not empty. And we'll do the exact same thing for our uh, password. So let's say trimming characters in white space, and I'll actually bump this onto the next line to make it look a little bit nicer. So cool, we briefly mentioned uh, this published thing in the last video. We had changed it from state, but I didn't quite dis explain what it does. So similar to state, when it changes, um, a view will recompute and basically render any changes as a result of state changes. And the published property wrapper is no exception. So we're gonna actually see it in action now. Um, with error handling. So let me give this a run. And what I'm going to do is if we do have valid uh, email and passwords uh, filled in, we'll say uh, we'll print out called and a print will go into this bottom thing here, which is our console. So let's give this a build and run. And you'll see if I type in test, and I'll type in test into the password as well. We'll see called gets printed out at the way, way, very bottom right there. Let me actually clear that out and hit it again. That way you guys can see it. Cool. So called is there. Now, what happens if I delete even one of these and I hit this login a few times? Well, nothing happens. But as a user, by looking at it, shouldn't I get yelled at um, for some reason, basically some error message telling me, hey, what is going on? Why isn't it working? And the answer is yes, it should definitely notify you in some way, shape or form that, hey, you need to fill in both email and password. So what we'll do here is we're going to introduce a published property that is going to be error uh, message. It's going to be equal to an empty string by default. And back in our login view, what we will do is write in our form or you can do it above the form as well. It's a little up to you, it's subjective. We're gonna say if let message is our view model dot error message. We want to show the error message, which is our message. We're gonna say it's gonna have a foreground color of red. So we're basically going to show a red colored text label. And that way we should be able to uh, show the error. So what it's actually yelling at me about here is that we're actually trying to unwrap this and that's actually not correct. What we want to verify is that instead of it being non-nil, we want to make sure it's not empty. And if it's not empty, we should show our view model error message. And if you make that adjustment, you'll see the error go away and your project should be building. So now in our login function, before we return, we can actually say error message is please fill in all fields. Okay, give it a build and run. And let's start by just hitting login. And just like that, we did see something popped up. 
Uh, we actually can't see it quite yet because it's either underneath our login form or uh, the color is not correct. So let's see what's going on. So I believe it's underneath the login form. So what I'll actually do is I will wrap it inside of our form. Uh, the reason it's underneath is because we're doing offset 50. So we're moving it up. But let me hit this and just like that, you'll see, please fill in all fields uh, does indeed show up. So cool, so now that that is showing up, let's write out the rest of our function here. We are also gonna do some very basic validation on the email address. There are more quote unquote uh, correct ways to do this validation, but we'll keep it simple. We know that a email should have both a at sign and a dot in it. So email at foo.com has both of those. So we're gonna guard that the email does contain a at sign and email does contain a period. Otherwise, we're gonna return and we're gonna say error message equals, please enter valid email and let's make sure we spell everything correctly and add nice periods at the end. And whenever actually we tap that login button, we want to reset the error message. We don't want it to show up. So we'll also just say when this function first gets called, you know, make it an empty string. That way the error message will go away. So once we have a valid email and we know we have got a password, what we can do is we can actually start leveraging Firebase to log in. So what I want you to do is import Firebase auth. And Firebase auth will essentially give you functionality to try to log a user in with the provided um, email address and password. The other thing that I will draw your attention to is we created this validate function. I'm gonna actually make it private and we're gonna move all of this jazz into the validate function. And we're gonna have this function return either true or false if we're able to validate all of the user's inputs and continue. So if we don't have a valid email or password, we'll return false, same for email, otherwise we'll return true. Now up here, I can simply say validate. And if we're not able to validate, we're just gonna stop. Now, once we have validated, we're gonna say try to log the user in by doing the following. So we're gonna say auth.auth, which gives us a reference to Firebase authentication. And we're gonna say try to sign in with a email and a password. So it's this variance down here, email is email, password is password. And that's actually literally all you need to do to sign in. So if you hit Command B to build, you'll see that your code is compiling and you should be able to run. Now, of course, you won't actually be able to sign in quite yet because we have not created any users. And that's actually what we're gonna work on in the next few videos. But this is indeed all you need to do to sign uh, in a user. You might be wondering, well, how do I get rid of this login screen? We probably don't wanna show this. And we're gonna do that uh, in a better way versus just you know manually dismissing this and showing something else. So that is all I've got for this lesson. Kudos to you if you've made it this far. We've actually done a lot more than what our app uh, you know shows. Even though it's only two screens, we've got a whole bunch of stuff set up and we're in really good shape. So appreciate you watching. Drop a like before clicking on to the next lesson and I will see you there.